So this interview is gonna be so useful. I have two students who have just made six figures and they're in their 20s. Learn from their experience. Tim Sykes here with two amazing young individuals. We got Dom, we got Jack. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having, Thanks us. For having us. No, thank you guys for sharing You know your story. I mean, this is pretty freaking amazing. You guys should get inspired, but also get scared, okay? I'm gonna give you that little <laughs> disclaimer because you don't really know what they've been through to become successful and what they're gonna continue, hopefully, to do to be even more successful. Um, let's start with you first. Tell us your story, Dom. So I'm 24 years old. I was going the traditional route. I uh, was in my fourth, my senior year of college, and I was a finance major, and I didn't really want to do anything in the business finance world. I just was trying to get through school and wait for my big idea to figure out something to do, start a business, sell a product, and I was kind of... You weren't I, feeling it. You weren't liking it. Yeah, no, I was, was not coming up with any ideas and I was doing some homework and I stumbled upon a video of Tim Sykes on Steve Harvey and it was all about how to get rich trading penny stocks and I didn't even know anything about the stock market or what penny stocks were and I just kind of got hooked from there and just started thinking this is my way out this is how I'm gonna get rich without getting a normal nine-to-five and so I convinced my dad to pay for the challenge course and so I joined that in the beginning of 2017. What did your parents think? Were they like, what is this What is this thing? Uh, my dad researched it for like a month and we both read the book, the hedge fund book. Yeah. And he believed in it enough to give me a shot and knew that I would put in the work to make it work. And so my mom didn't really know anything about it. She is more of a believer in the stability of a normal job. And I just knew that was never gonna be for me, so. I started grinding at the beginning of 2017, um, lost consistently for 10 months till the end of October of 2017, and turned it around to, in November 2017, and I've been profitable ever since. And how much are you up to now in profits? Uh, almost 200000 $200,000 in what? So like under two years? Uh, just eight, yeah. Roughly? Yep. And how did you turn it around? Because a lot of um, people are in this situation First month, two months, three months, six months, nine months. Like Tim Grittani took nine months. What happened in month 10 or month 11? I think and month 10 was my worst month ever. I was started off losing little and little and little. And then for like the three months leading up to the final big red month was like break even or positive just a little bit. So I was starting to think I'm getting this like I'm right on the edge of getting successful. Like I'm going to do this now. And then in October 2017, I just had my worst month ever, like way worse than any other month I had. How much did you lose? 1600 And my normal losing month was like $50, $100. And I, my winning month was $50 or $100. Yeah. But I was like, kind of stopped the bleeding, so I was really excited. And then for that to happen, it was pretty much just a bloodbath all month, just pretty much everyday red. And now I think that's a point where a lot of people think it's you know time to throw in the towel, quit. But the very next month, I think I just got sick of it. I got sick of losing. And I said, I'm not going to do the stupid things I've done that have got me to this point. So the only way to, you know, move forward from here is to eliminate everything I'm doing wrong. Just do the only things I'm doing right. And lo and behold, things started to work out. And how much did you make in like month 11, month 12? Uh, I made like three grand in November of 2017, then like eight grand in December, and then 20 grand in January. Damn! So it took you having your worst month to really crystallize, like, I don't want this feeling anymore. Let me change that once and for all. So yeah. the small losses, small losses, small losses, you're like, okay, this is annoying. But you, you didn't have enough pain to be like, let me change. Then when you had the pain, so sometimes this is what's so you know, confusing. Sometimes you have to take like one step backwards, not like because you want to, like, oh, let me just lose big. You didn't want to, but you recognize, okay, I'm losing big. Now let me not do that. So you take one step backwards and then you go like 20 steps forward. No, for sure. It's just like I got to that breaking point and it was like all the break even and little losses, they didn't hurt as much. 
but when that happened, it was like big changes need to happen now because this can't happen anymore. Like you're running out of money, you know, your mental capital is getting drained. I'm also going through my life and like don't have a real job, no money's coming <laughs> in. Like things got to change. Like, what did you? Did your friends and family were they like month seven, month eight? Like what are you doing, dude? As it dragged on, and all my friends and everyone my age had jobs, it was starting to get a little, <laughs> starting to feel the pressure. <laughs> I mean, and the only one who really believed me in my, was my dad, and now he tells me back then, he was starting to get worried, <laughs> but he wasn't telling me back then. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, how much did you lose today was a normal comment for my family and oh stuff. Oh my and, God. And, you know, that gets to you eventually, and you know, when you turn it around, you'll be able to Laugh you know, show face. those people up. And, yeah. Yeah. And now how much you've been making 20,000 in a month? What's your biggest month so far now? 77,000. 77,000 in one February, month. And then 5,000 fees, so like 70 grand. It's crazy. And then how did you two meet? What was your story? Um, I started in 2017. I jumped right into the challenge. I was kind of just looking for something because I didn't go to college. And I kind of wanted to do something on my own because I never really liked bosses. And I was doing a valet job and I didn't really like my bosses. And... I was just saving up my money and I kind of found something and stocks interested me because I was good at video games and I was good at sports, but yeah. I sucked at school. There sucked at writing, sucked at spelling, sucked at all that kind of stuff. Cool. And I just joined the challenge in 2017 because I immediately saw DRYS, that chart go from five to a hundred. Yeah. And then I watched live ETRM, my first month Woo. of trading. Woo. So I was like, wow, there's so much opportunity here. How'd and you find me first of all? My friend at the gym was like, I'm starting to learn trading penny stocks, like, because I told him that my goal in 2017 was to, you know, get invested, invest in some stocks. Yeah. And literally, like, January 3rd, 2017, I ran into this kid at the gym, and he was like, I'm learning stocks too, like, Tim Sykes, he's teaching me how to trade penny stocks. And that night, I went home, and I Googled your name. Crazy. And I just, like, was so interested by all this volatility, and I was like, this is it, 100%. And then I convinced my parents to split the challenge with me. Nice. And... I just went in from there and I was all in 2017. Was just studying the entire year, watching. Uh, so you didn't your... trade? No, I didn't trade. I had a 3K E Trade account and yeah. 7K Thinkorswim account. Okay. And I think I lost 500 on both accounts. So I was like, okay, why am I going to trade and just lose my money? I'd rather work, save up, and get out of the PDT and paper trade just to like kind of test things out and see how things work and yeah. test my emotions. So you just have to study first. You just got to study. And that entire year, I would just be working. I would literally have headphones in. I yeah. wouldn't even talk to my coworkers. I would just be running like video lessons, just listening. Oh my god! Thinking, I love of, it. thinking about like trading and everything. Like as you're valet. As I'm valeting, like driving the cars, I'm like have headphones in and just listening. Don't so, drive and watch video lessons. I was just listening. Earbuds, I think, are okay. Is yeah. that okay? Is that a good advice? I don't know. I feel thing. like that's still dangerous because you're like concentrating on the lesson and you're driving like. Be careful when driving and studying. <laughs> I was more concentrated I guess you're on just learning. In the, you're in the parking lot, though. Yeah, you just kind of back so the you're cars not like, in. You're, yeah. You don't really go on the street. I and mean, like, a freaking have to make... like a Tesla auto driver could do that. Like, yeah. just push the button. Uh -huh. Did you try those? Have you tried that? Yeah, I've drove Teslas. They're, They're cool. cool. But like, where yeah. you press it and then like... I didn't, I didn't do the autopilot. Oh, okay, I didn't really cool. know how to do, do it. Do that. So you've been studying for how long? The entire year of 2017, I studied. Okay. And then what happened? At the end, I didn't really know like what I wanted to do, but then at the end of 2017, I saw Michael Hudson. He was trading, Huddy. um, he was trading all those OTC short setups, and I we'll post a link of Huddy's interview just below this too. By the way, sorry. To he was kind of the first one who I saw who kind of went through his process fully, and I saw him shorting all these stocks. So I was like, okay, so I need to open a center point account because he's shorting all these stocks. So I was working throughout the whole year, and I saved up 30 grand. Whoa, nice. And then. In 2018, I opened my account, uh, like January 11th or something. But it was the day after Jeff Sessions um, came out, and all the weed stocks crashed yeah. because I was pissed because I was waiting to get approved to be able to short all those stocks that yeah. were going on the huge run. Missed it by a day. Oh man! And then started trading, and off the bat, I was honestly pretty profitable. Like I'd make one to two grand per month, and I never really, I would lose a little bit here and there. But then. I made some money. You're still valeting? You're doing still both? Still valeting, still valeting, okay. yeah, definitely. How did you manage valeting and trading? You valet at night? Valet at night, trading in the morning. Gotcha, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. Sorry. And then, where were we here? So, You're making then May, one or 2K. Yeah, then May came, and I got into a short position on Turtle Beach. Yes. And that kind of went downhill because I started shorting it right at the open, and I was literally risking $300 on my position, and... 
and then it spiked through and I didn't have time to cover and I was down like 700. I was like, nah, I'm just going to add and hope like it fades back off because I was still shorting into resistance from the last day. And I just kept going all the way from 10 to 19 and by like 13 or 14 bucks, I was all in. And then oh I went to 19 God. and I was literally down 10 grand and like, it was the first first like week we started messaging with each other yeah. and he like went completely radio silence after the morning i was like please tell me you covered and he's like no nope, what was your mindset like you know rule number one is cut losses quickly you know that you've been studying my stuff yeah i knew i knew i was just in such a bad spot but i just couldn't do it like i didn't have control over my emotions and but now since i went through that and i felt like that i never will go through that ever again like i would never put myself in position to lose that big ever again like I'm, i get so scared when positions go against me i get like so eager to cut i start sweating i have like a biological yeah. response i'm like wait a minute i shouldn't be in this position when like, i see like either when i'm long and i see like all the prints hitting the bed and it's all red i'm like oh, i need to get out or if it's green and like it starts swiping up like i cover into that so and again it took your biggest loss to scare you and you got that emotional education yeah and now you can't do it so those of you guys who have big losses like recognize that that can be your turning point and don't just go out and have like a big loss like oh i need this big loss to like turn it around mm -hmm. you, don't. you have to learn from us so you don't have to do it like it's not worth it you always have to cut your losses quickly never add to a loser like those are rule number one and if you can't follow that like you're not going to be able to be profitable so what happened after you're, you're down 10 grand did you take the 10 grand loss um well i was up by my account so i didn't lose 10 grand no i i held, I held through until it pulled back to 15. <laughs> bad lesson but I was, I was talking to like, I messaged Tim Gratani. I was like, I'm in a terrible spot here. Like, I don't know how to get out of this position. I'm, my account's all in from 1250, stock's at 17. Like, I don't know what to do. He was like, okay, well, if it goes over this, if it goes over a high day, you have to cover and take the 10 grand loss. But thankfully, like it, it pulled and I covered around 15. And I lost 7,000, 7,500. And that was basically all my profits I made during the entire year, so here I am. So you're back to start. Here I am. Back to square one. Yep. After back like, to square after one. After how long? Like a year? No, this was in May, so um, oh, about yeah. halfway through the year. Okay. And then I was just like, all right, I need some time off. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep studying. And this is when I started talking to him, and I kind of just watched his trading style, and I liked it because it seemed a lot less risky, and I felt like you have to learn how to like go long and trade OTCs before you can trade listed stocks because listed stocks are so much harder. True. So you guys message each other on like unprofitly? You just like met, you slid into like his messages? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh dude, your profit chart's nice. Like I like how you don't have <laughs> And then we just started talking. <laughs> what did you think when he started messaging you? Um, I don't know, I was, I was terrible at networking at the beginning, so it was kind of new to me talking to people about trading. Yeah. Um, but after we talked for a little while, I was really understanding that he was putting in just as much work as I was doing all the YouTube mentorship stuff, the value taming, Gary Vaynerchuk, all this extra stuff that you want to be successful in life. And those are the type of people I like to talk to now that are doing all the extra stuff to get better at everything in their life. And so we started talking pretty much every day and that's when he took his break, and like a three month break through the summer. And then he came out at the end of summer and did two weeks with me in Michigan just to like learn my process in person. Mm -hmm. And that was when CVS. You just invited like a random stranger yeah. into your house. We talked enough. I was hoping, I was betting he wasn't a creep. <laughs> yeah, he didn't see a picture of me because I, on my profit, I just have that picture of that character chair of me. FYI, <laughs> do not just invite anybody into your home. There's a, like, you guys got lucky that you're good friends now and it's working out. This will not happen the majority of the time. Disclaimer, disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer. I don't want to like, oh, I watched this video, so I invited this guy into my house, and then my two kids are kidnapped. Like, you can just see that happening. Most people are not good people out there. So you guys got lucky. Yeah. So what happened? So you're down. You take some months off. Okay, so now I have, I'm living a little bit. I'm still working. I have 29000 And I basically. You some good money as a valet. Yeah, I mean, I was making like 10 15 an hour and 10 bucks, And I would just work so yeah. many hours. Yeah, of course. I would just keep working and add it up. But um, after that, I went out and I saw him in August, and that's when I started trading again. And that's when CVSI was running. Yes. And we did so much preparation. We were watching Panic Dip Buys uh, video <laughs> lessons of CVS, of uh, Fannie Mae and all those panics. Yeah. And the next day, Fannie, or, uh, CVSI had that panic from 9 to 4. Yeah, it's beautiful. And we both screwed it up. I started buying at like 6. 
and we were so mad and we were but just, it happens that's yeah. okay practice it was like too much better. preparation and I was like way too nervous to yeah. make the trade yeah I mean you can say that like it's like it, you see it there you know it but then like actually executing the order it's like analysis paralysis right like you yeah. overanalyze it but so I like that you it happened with Shimp though we nailed it so that's okay but it's okay so yeah. it and this is the thing you're not always going to get it like on your first try, maybe not even your second or third try, but if you see the pattern work again and again and again and you recognize it, so like the, the stock bounced perfectly, CVSI, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Bounced like a dollar a share, perfect. I remember those. I remember seeing the bids start stacking. I remember the exact number. It was 525 by 526, and that's like was the turning point, so and then it just it bounced up a dollar like a share. Yep, it was immediate 50 cent bounce and I kept going for another 50 cents. But it's okay. And the, the, see, yeah. that's the thing. It's not just about how much you profit. Like, how much did you lose when you're wrong? Like a thousand, I think. So you lost a thousand, but you guys both witnessed it real time. Mm-hmm. And so you can remember that. Like, for me, I would say that's good. Like, whether you made a thousand or lost a thousand, it doesn't matter. You're up over $200,000 now, right? So that trade doesn't matter, but that education is priceless. And if you can say, hey, I'm going to pay $1,000 for a priceless education. That's a good, I'd hand a $1,000 every time, right? And that's the way you kind of have to look at it. Many of you guys get discouraged when you miss a play or if you lose on a play, you're like, it was there. The fact that you're there, the fact that you're watching it. The sad thing is most people don't know what to watch, right? Mm-hmm. So you watched it. You, did you screw it up too? I screwed it up, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't um, buy it early. I just missed the turn because I wasn't sure and I, it was panicking so hard that like two th- I was trying to buy 2,000 shares of it and I knew that if it slipped like maybe I'd lose another 50 cents a share and were like, you guys messaging each other when this happened you saw no, him no, no, he was in person that this was is when I came out, out to oh, okay. visit this was, oh yeah in person which gotcha. was awesome because so you saw him screw it up and he's sitting there and he's like yeah. I was because I was down a huge unrealist because I couldn't get out yeah. in the panic so yeah. I had to wait to play it basically damage control on the bounce like as if I was playing it I bad have, lesson I didn't have a big enough account to actually buy the actual dip so yeah. I was just waiting for it to get up high enough to look for the turn up there yeah. to get out for a smaller loss but yeah. that was a so you saw day. him screw it up and then you're like I don't want to do anything yeah I was just kind of scared to pull the trigger because if I was wrong like I didn't want to lose money but you witnessed it I witnessed and that's the it. biggest thing being there and witnessing it and learning from it and whether you're early or late or you don't trade it or if you have a small profit and you could have taken a bigger profit it's all part of your education mm-hmm. so what happened after this so what happened after this was awesome I went home and in September, that's when the weed stocks were running, and I literally made exactly five hundred dollars a day every day. Like it was like six hundred, and then it was like four hundred, and my months were or my weeks were like twenty six hundred, twenty four hundred, twenty five hundred, twenty five hundred, and it added up to like ten thousand dollars on a month. Yeah, ten thousand dollars, and it was so consistent. And I was like, wow, I can really do this. Yeah. And then from there, the next month I made were you 10 dip grand. buying panics or buying breakouts or first green days? I was buying breakouts. I was playing his OT swizzle setup. I was. Uh, Doing the whole, framework, the whole framework basically. I was just trading the OTCs. How crazy is that? The framework works. The framework is the best pattern. Like I love the framework. <laughs> We're gonna post a link to the framework guide underneath this. We'll give you a special offer just to learn it. Mm-hmm. So you're making ten grand, and then what? Next month made eleven grand. Yeah. And then December and November got kind of slow, but I still made like ten grand between those two months. So then I ended the year, and I was up thirty grand. So are you still a valet at this point? Um. So in October. Uh, is when I decided to move out with him because when I went out in August, we kind of made plans to get an office and trade together because just like my friends and family didn't really understand what I was doing. Yeah, of course. And I wanted to be like all in, focused on trading the entire like time. And I was doing what whatever, like, I wanted to put in the most amount of work I could. And yeah. I was just willing to move and just trade and focus solely on Again, trading. Again, disclaimer, it's not always going to work out like this if you just start <laughs> trading with another person. Most of the time, newbies leading newbies ends in disaster. <laughs> Okay, but Dom wasn't a that. newbie. He was already up like 30 grand. Yeah, yeah 40 grand. Okay, but even if you meet somebody who's up 30 or 40 grand, <laughs> like it just, it's so rare what you guys have. Like you guys are friends, you're trading, like you're learning. That's good. But most of the time, I want you to take away from this that, you know, you learn and um, especially like the big loss that really got you there. So then you moved out there and now you guys are like learning. And now what happens? You're up 30 grand? Mm-hmm. So then... Uh, January comes and so this was what we were filming this in July so this is like six months ago seven months yeah. ago yep this was January uh, 2019 and it was kind of slow to start off with but then that Fannie Mae trade came yeah and 
me and Dom started buying like at 190 with like oh, maybe a 187 stop. We had like a one or two penny stop and the, the stock spiked like 80 cents and we had so much size because we were, we were just going to cut if we were wrong. But it was a stock Fannie that Mae was, is very liquid too. Yeah, it was very liquid. So I could buy like 15,000 shares of it and have like a two cent stop and it was 300 bucks. Yeah. And then the stock went nuts and I made $7,500 and he made like 25 grand. In a day. Yeah. In, like or an in a morning. In an <laughs> no, hour. in an hour. How did that feel? Were you guys just like sitting there like... I didn't really know it what to was think. Like, I don't an know. An insane feeling. Right? I remember laying on the ground, just like heart going nuts. Just like, did that just happen? Like, yeah, because our plan was like, okay, uh, the stock's, four days this stock's <laughs> going to be slow, so we got to swing it. And next thing you know, like the stock's spiking like 70 So cents how did you know to take profits? Or I was not to, to let a 20K profit go out. I had never strength, had a 10K profit. You know what I mean? Yeah. We had your change, biggest profit, right? Oh, yeah. Plan. That was like triple. Yeah, I mean, if you go in with a swing trade idea, but you get your goals, yeah. like, you take it. You don't need to risk no. it overnight. I do this sometimes, like, where I'm buying a stock, let's say, at, like, 3 p.m. or 3.30 p.m. Eastern, but then it hits my goals, like, 3.50, 3.55. You can't be greedy. Well, you, sometimes I, I sell half. Like, if it's, mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's not too overextended, I'll yeah. sell half, and I'll be like, oh, let me see. Just like, on TTCM the other day. Like, it yeah. hit my goals, and that I... That was good. Yeah. That was good, and that I held really it over well. the weekend. Yeah, Faded into the close. But that was good, right? So that was a nice spike. But, like, if it's too overextended, if the stock is up, like, 200, 300, 500%, I'm just like, all right, too, too rich for my blood. I'm out. Mm -hmm. So what happened after your, your $25,000 day, and you made 7,500? Yep, and then from there, it was just six weeks of awesome OTC action. And I banked like 50 grand on trading stocks like AOYI, VYST, oh. SHMP, I made 20 grand on just going long. I couldn't even short it. So SHMP, I think from most traders in our niche, this has been our biggest winner this year. I made yeah. like five grand because I'm trading with a small account. Uh, Gritani, I think, made 60 grand. Huddy made like 30 grand. Did you buy the breakout or dip by the morning panic or both? Everything. I bought, started buying the, four, the five cent breakout, sold it at eight, rebought the 10 cent breakout, sold it at 12. Rebought the 34 cent breakout, sold it at 50, and then and it went up to 90 cents, to mind 90, you. It yeah. was like what two cents to 90 cents inside of like two weeks or three yeah. weeks. Yeah, and then Did all you the shorted pain. it all or no? I didn't have a short. Huddy account. shorted. Huddy shorted no. some at 90 and covered yeah. that debt. I wish I could have shorted it, but now I have shorting brokers because now I've made money going long, and I just now I'm I've proven that I can short now and. You can't. You shouldn't stop. Start off with shorting. You should start off with an E-Trade account going long OTCs. Shorting is scary. Shorting, Longing especially is Especially when you're a newbie. One hundred percent. Did you dip by that SHMP morning panic from Three ninety cents to row. fifty cents? I bought, Three days in a row. I bought forty thousand at fifty cents, Ooh. and I sold before you because, like, in two seconds, I was already up three thirty-five hundred. Dude, I, I like, saw. I got to get out of this quick. I know. I was like, and then it kept going. Went it bounced going, from what fifty to seventy. Yeah. And like. 10 minutes or like 20 minutes or something. That was a beautiful play. And mind you, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, these were very, very, very liquid stocks. Oh, I mean, yeah. we yeah. traded 100 million shares that day, or roughly yeah. that amount. Yeah. And Fannie Mae trades like 100 million shares. So you don't just take size on any play. Only um, the liquid ones. You need the liquid ones and you need the volatile ones. Yeah, like everyone's like, oh, pen. this stock is down 3%. I'm going to do the morning dip buy. And I'm like, it's not even panic. And when it's, it's choppy, like, like if it's a red bar, then green bar, then red bar, then green bar. Like you point. need blood. Like every single print has to be panic, 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 panic. Max panic. Because that's going to be the best bounce opportunity. Max panic. You take out the stop losses. It's not due to bad news. It's due to stock market, especially penny stocks inefficiencies. Mm. So, all right. So take me through. So now how much are you up now? I've lost track. It actually was really cool because literally one uh, February ended, I crossed $100,000 right when it ended. So like the last day of February yeah. was the day I crossed 100000 100000 in profits in basically what? Like four months, five months? Uh, six months. Six months? Yeah. Oh, that beats yeah. the ball ballet. Did you valet? When did you quit ballet? When I moved to Michigan. Okay. So when I was making money in September and October, I was still doing my valet. Yeah. And... But then, I mean, what do your parents and your friends think now? Do they know, know or do you keep it quiet? Um, I don't really Should like you to blur out your face? I don't like to brag too much. Like, I just like to stay humble and I just am trading and I keep want to, I want to keep getting better. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not really interested in be like, oh, I made a hundred thousand. Like, no, no. My friends the, and my family. That just, is the right mentality. I trade stocks. And like, you're trying to I'm stay doing. humble too, right? Yeah. I was humbled in March. Yeah. When, when after my big hot shot. And February. you've had some big losses too. Yeah. I had... I guess not a huge loss. It was a million paper cuts added together on EMIS. And we see, we're talking about how great I am at long. This was a short trade, something that I don't specialize in. Yeah. Got overconfident. 
I uh, didn't break any rules because I cut my losses. I didn't do anything. I had to lose or anything. Yeah. I just oversized on a stock not worthy of that kind of size with a spread too wide. The MIS was not that liquid, if no. I remember correctly. It was like 200000 a day, maybe. Way too illiquid. And I was trying to take 10 k Way too much. And the yeah. spread's already like 10 770 cents. by 790. So when you take the trade, you're already down two grand. Yeah, which doesn't really make What were sense. you trying to do? Why were you trying? Were you trying I to talk him out of it? Pump. It was up like three or four dollars a share. I, well, and well, when I was yelling red. at him for taking that much size because, but he got he already had taken a big loss by getting trapped on like a fake red move. So he said, okay, now I need to m use more size to make my money back and. That kind of game you just really can't yeah. play. No, you, when you take a big loss, you get smaller. You don't get yeah. bigger. That's like revenge trading 101. Yeah. Yeah, so you was. think about like looking for like a, I don't know, a piece of wood somewhere and just hitting him <laughs> over the head and then like, you know, closing out. save me out. some money. Yeah, right? Now and then he wakes the, up in the hospital two weeks later and he's like, thank you. Well, the problem was the month before I'd gotten rewarded for that behavior on KLMN, a pump. Yeah. That ran from like what, like 2 to like 11? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got in some trouble on that one early. It got the skull, and then it I was short, the and then and it bones. gapped up and ran for another two or three days. Yeah. So I'd already taken like ten or eleven thousand losses on that. But the, on the day that it did actually crash, I was there and I was right, and so I netted like plus eleven or twelve thousand. So I got rewarded so for that. So that's a bad lesson. It was. Bad lesson. And bad. this is the thing: some of you guys are making money using bad strategies, and it's going to catch up to you. Mm -hmm. You cannot just judge a strategy based on how much money you make because you're taking excessive risks. Yeah. You keep playing with fire. Like I, I know a lot of people, especially a lot of short sellers these days, like it's a, these stocks always come down. Let me just short. Yes, they do come down, but you can't control the risk in the meantime, and you might blow up. Yep. And you might have a lot of fees in short selling. So right now, I barely short sell, right? Yep. Like, I like dip buying. I like buying morning uh, panics. I like buying breakouts. I like buying first green days. Um, what do you think people should do, like, if, they, if they're in a bad situation? Because both of you guys have been in bad situations money-wise and, and trade-wise. Like, let's say someone watching this is in a bad trade right now. What would you do if you're in a bad trade? Immediately close the position out and turn your screens off and walk away. What would you do? The same thing. I mean, thankfully, I never went through a situation like you because I would just cut and accept it. My problem is I kept going back for more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would leave. If you're trading like that or you know it's a mistake or get out of the trade and leave, like shut it off, leave, maybe leave for a week, like let the pain sink in, let, you know, let it hit you emotionally because it, time will heal that wound yeah. and you'll forget about it and yeah. you just kind of need to let that happen and then come back with a fresh mind and this is what like some of you guys message me like okay i didn't know your rules i'm in this position what i do should i keep holding maybe it'll come back and for me those losses is not even about the money it's the mental mm -hmm. you know repercussions because you're in that loss it's like a cancer you need to cut that cancer out and you can't trade like there's going to be another setup right down the line like this setup is not worth it to risk your entire account no it's one like, trade matters never. enough to risk your entire account there's always going to be another yeah. trade, whether it's a long, whether it's a short, whether it's CBD or Bitcoin or some new technology. It might not be the next day. This is, what I think, what people are afraid of because, you know, with penny stocks, there's not always a perfect play every day, right? Like, how often do you guys trade? Too um, much. <laughs> in February, we were trading, like, every day because there was a lot of plays. There but was I've, a lot there. I've tried to tone down my trading in the summer and basically just size down, like, if I can risk five or not five hundred fifty two hundred dollars to yeah. make like two or three hundred dollars, yeah. I'm happy with that. But in February, there's more plays, so you can risk like two, three, four hundred to make like a couple grand, three grand. But this is trading. You can modulate. Yeah. You don't have to buy a thousand shares every time. Like if it's a new strategy or if it's a slow market, you can buy two hundred shares to the instead of a thousand. It's not black or white, and you don't even have to trade. This is another thing. So if you have patience, for me, I'd actually rather people under trade than over trade. You know, I think a lot of people are like, okay, I don't know the patterns. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. And you're going to do that paper trade just to kind of see what you're going to do and like how everything works. But when you, you don't have, get the emotional education of paper yeah, trading, true. at least you still get some practice though, yeah. seeing how fast these stocks move. Yeah, definitely. Are you surprised at how fast this stuff moves? What, in like listed land? Just no, oh. like all these stocks, because we're trading the most volatile stocks. No, in the yeah, when you, especially when you go from like a background in OTC to like right now. I've, the last few months, I spent diving into Nasdaq longs to learn them more, and the tape is just so different. Yeah, like, of course. 
It's I love OTCs. Trust me, I'm very happy with my TTCM and yeah. then my RAFA. I know that they're like sketchier companies. Like I think all these companies are going to fail. By the way, notice we're talking about our gains with patterns and uh, strategies, not saying this is a good company, this is a bad company. All these companies suck, okay? Definitely. Do you agree on that? Yeah. yeah. Right? You know, I never even like read the fundamentals or anything like I'm basically just trading the technicals well if you just expect the worst you're never yeah. disappointed and I that's, know that's, a cynical that's why I was so, <laughs> I'm so cynical towards the stocks I'm better at going long because I think that all the stocks are really bad so when they start going against me and I'm long I can immediately cut because I'm scared that they're gonna go to zero that's a good way to think but with short selling you're like oh no this stocks junk so you want to hold on to it and that's just a toxic mindset that will get you in trouble That's actually a really good point I've never heard that 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 makes sense so being cynical helps you on the long side because you're so scared. Mm -hmm. But being cynical on the short side Hurts gives you too much confidence. Because yeah. I can't tell you how many shorts are like, no, oh, this company has warrants, it's going to go down. And then it squeezes 300%. They're like, but the warrants, <laughs> but the fundamentals. Like DRYS, yeah. when it went from 5 to 100 plus, one of the worst fundamentally flawed companies in a while. And yeah. yet it still went up 20 times in a week. Price because, action is key. Well, but it's also short squeeze. Yeah. I mean, so do you notice now... Right now, mid-2019 versus like 2018 or 2017, there's a lot more squeezes, and, and the squeezes are, are bigger. That's what I start seeing, right? Like, you don't just, yeah. back in, especially to, before you guys began, 2016, 15, 14, you would have stocks that would go from like one to four and then back down. So like four times your money, that would be max. But now you're seeing stocks go from like one to 10 or two to 20 or like, you know, uh, what was it? BPTH yeah, two to 70 plus. Yeah, that was crazy. Like that's crazy. So yeah. shorting is very scary. And if you're cynical about fundamentals, that actually makes you more aggressive as a short seller and increases your risk. So being a cynic as a short seller is dangerous. Exactly. I don't know. That's what I think. Let me ask you one more question before we go. Um, what helped you the most really learn everything? Because you guys both studied, like, we haven't talked about your process. Like, talk about a little bit about your process, of, like, what you've studied. Because you guys are in the challenge. You have access to the DVDs, webinars, video lessons. Like, what helped you the most really crystallize everything? So at the beginning, when I first started, I'll be honest, I didn't put in a quarter of the amount of work that is needed to succeed. I really did think you could, you know, follow some alerts, learn slowly, and just start making 100000 a year. Um, I quickly learned that's not a reality. And so at the end of, the beginning of 2017, I had some health problems, so I left college at the end of my senior year and finished from home. So I was given basically an entire day to do what I wanted for like every single day. So I, would, I started using that to my advantage. I said, okay, I'm just gonna put every hour of the day into trading and I'm gonna see if I can make it work. So I would literally start every morning at like seven and I would study DVDs, video lessons, then prepare for the market open. Um, usually end up trading something and losing. And then middle of the day, I would watch more DVDs, more video lessons. And then after the close, I would go back and recap the day, create watch lists, look at charts, and then like have an hour break, eat dinner. <laughs> and then from like five or six to midnight, I would just sit and watch DVD after DVD after DVD. Which is more useful, DVDs or video lessons or webinars? Um, I think they're all important because because, yeah, video lessons kind of keep you up to date with current tickers and what's going on now in strategies. DVDs give you basics of what you need to know. Yeah. Um, it's like stock I did get history. to the point where it was like overload of information. And that's kind of thing what kind of led to my bad month in October at the beginning was I started trying so many different things that it was impossible to get any consistency because even if I was winning somewhere, the 10 other places that I lost $10 on would still overcome that. Over diversification of yep. strategies. That happens sometimes too. And most of my top students, they focus on one or two good patterns. It's okay to test, but you can't just keep doing like 10 strategies. I don't understand how people take like this, I got this, I got this, I got this. And I'm like, I take one or two positions like max at a time. Like I'm focused. Um, how about you? How many hours a day is that, by the way? Uh, I don't know, somewhere like 12, 15, 17 on some days. Like, and it was every day for 10 12, months. 12, 15, 17 hours. And for every day for how long? Ten, all those 10 months. Every for 10 months. Day. So I do mean, the math, that's a lot of hours. And I was just addicted. And more. Every time I got hit, I'd come back for more. And eventually you pay your dues and it works out. Did you gradually learn? Like, okay, you're like, oh, when you're watching a video lesson in month one, you don't really know. But then month seven, you're like, I've seen this pattern. Oh, that's exactly what happens. I remember watching like trading tickers. Like 
I've seen it probably 10 or 15 times in its entirety. This is Tim Grittani's guide. Click the link below. We're going to give you a special. And every time I'd watch it, I'd go, whoa, I didn't catch that the first time. Whoa, I didn't catch that. And just little golden pieces that yeah. it's like one sentence, but it can change everything about your trading. And if you continue to pull those from you know, a bunch of different traders, you're eventually going to be, and then you can morph it into yourself. Eventually you have enough there to go out and trade successfully. Do you believe in like, I have like this analogy, I have to say you have a knowledge account and a monetary account and you have to grow your knowledge account so that it tips over and spills into your monetary account. Oh, you account. do. There's, it's so front loaded. You need, there's like, you need to learn so much before it's even possible to start making money because you have to be so consistent in everything you do. And with how much psychology and emotions go into it, you need to have, it needs to be like a second language, second language for you. Like all the basics that you need to know. What do you think about some people where they're like, Tim, I want to learn, but you know, you have to prove yourself to me. Give me a pick. Let me make some money first and then maybe I'll study. What do I say to those people? Not worth it. Right? Too crazy. Do it yourself. Like. It's flipped. Yeah. Like you either want to <laughs> yeah. study or you don't. You don't, you don't like make money right away to prove yourself. Like you have to prove it to yourself after studying. And if you have any doubts, just don't do it. That's why I want to interview these guys because they've made a few hundred thousand dollars, but they also put in so much time and effort. And that's what I need, dedicated students. How many hours a day do you put in? Or have you put in? All day. <laughs> I would just be thinking about trading like all day. Like in 2017, when I found it, I was just so addicted to learning because I saw all the potential. So I would just wake up, like I would just be going through stuff all day. And I was just so interested to learn. I can't even tell you like how many hours a day I'd be studying and just listening. That's good. And I mean, just thinking, is... even when I'm not studying, I would just be thinking about stocks. You know what I mean? We've heard this from Ducks. We've heard this from Roland. We hear this from Tim Grittani. Yeah. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy because like people are like, yeah, okay, you've done all this, but you've only made like a hundred or 200,000. But what people have to understand is that like you've built yourself a base off which you can grow. Right? So like the hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, you keep this up, you keep being patient, waiting for the right place. This will be a million, two million, three million later on. Mm -hmm. And it happens quicker. I mean, the fact that you made, what are you, you're at a hundred and twenty thousand? I'm at a hundred and twenty two, yeah. And you're at two hundred? Yeah, right around there. Low, it's like more two hundred now after my So after like one or two years, you're each in six figure territory. But later on, like you've built yourself a good base. It's not just about the money that you've mm -hmm. made. It's the knowledge and the experience that you have. That's the process. Yeah. To get anywhere in this game, you have to actually love the process, not just the end result. If you're in this for the money, it's probably not going to work. You have to come show up to the market every day and literally love what you're doing. Even on the down days, even when things are going good, you have to know that like you're doing this because you love it. And like if you do it because you love it, the money will just come with that. How do you control love versus addiction? Because this can be addictive yeah, it's where it's line. like, I love this game, but I keep losing all my money. Like, trading is addictive. I think no matter what, you're going to be addicted. I think it's learning how to... Control the addiction? Pull that back a little bit and just say, you know, like my problem with adapting to the markets from February to March <clears throat> was that I was too addicted to that, that market, that lifestyle, like showing up every day and trading every single hour being in something every minute of the day. And then when the market changed, me not realizing that and respecting that. You gotta and not laying back. Yeah, yeah. that's when I need to take my trip. That's when I need to pull back and get away from the market. And it's a lesson that had to be learned. And do you take time off from trading? Yeah, I take time off. What do you do when you're time off? Play video games. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> it's okay, literally. Any time off, like where you kind of like get a little balance, like I like traveling, uh -huh. I like going to third world countries and building schools, whatever you like. If you like building video games, buying video games, making video games, playing video games, just, watching uh, movies, I whatever. I just like talking to people too. Like I get enjoyment out just like talking to traders throughout the day and just watching them go through their process. That's where I've gained most of my knowledge. Well, I see you're very active in the challenge chat. Yeah, I love networking. I love talking to people because I think there is an abundance of knowledge to be learned just watching a profitable trader go through his process and you see what he's doing good, you see what he's doing bad and just learn what he's, like try to copy what he's doing good and don't do what he's doing bad Yeah. and you take a little bit from everybody and then you can create your own self. Well, that's the thing. We're all a little different. So what works for you might not work for you, which might not work for me, but you take different things. Like even though we trade different stocks somewhat and we trade differently a little bit, we still have, you know, rule number one, cutting losses quickly focusing on a pattern, you know, when there's no great plays, you either, you know, modulate and tone down your position sizer or you don't trade at all. Like all consistently profitable traders have very similar type things. And it's counterintuitive too. 
This is what I find interesting. Do you find it difficult to kind of remember all these counterintuitive rules and like utilize them? Because like normally, you know, addictive behavior, like you want to trade, you want to make money, you want to feel good. But then if there's no place, you got to be like, no, I, I get away. Stop. Don't type the, ah. <laughs> That's where discipline really comes in. It's like, you know, you're doing something wrong when you're breaking one of those rules. Yeah. And it's still hard to like pull back and not do it or get out when you've decided it's, you know, I shouldn't be in this trade or those rules are hard to learn because they're almost common sense. Yeah. But you just have to get to the point where you understand over time, if I follow these rules, it will make me money and it will give me the least amount of damage over time. So you just have to know it's, it's just when you're just starting to, when you break the curve to profitability, you get to the point where you just realize breaking the rules and doing dumb stuff leads to pain and losses. Yeah. So I just have to stop doing it. And once you get there, it's a lot easier. How do you control your discipline? So whenever I make a bad trade, like I get mentally fried and I just think, I think, I think, what did I do wrong? And I just, I don't like having that feeling. So usually when I go into the day, I know if it's going to be a good or bad day based on my scanning the previous night, seeing what stocks are setting up, the market environment. Yeah. And if I do make an impulse trade, I'm going to be a lot quicker to cut and I'm not going to risk a lot of money. But trades that I've been stalking for a long time, like those are my best trades. Yeah. When they really just come to you and you're ready to go. Those are your best trades, but you just need to stay away from all those impulse trades. And if you do get into one, just cut it immediately and just move on. Beautiful. And just don't bag hold. All right, cool. Last question. One tip for people watching this. Let's say they're new. They don't know what to do. What's one thing that they could do to like get smarter first? Um, I would go through your numbers. I would track hardcore at the beginning and I would figure out if there's anywhere you're profitable and then try like a month experiment where you only trade that setup or that strategy or that time of day and cut out everything else that's losing money consistently. I think that's the number one thing for beginners that especially me at the beginning when you're not consistent, you're everywhere. You're trading pre-market, you're out in the open, you're trading listed stocks, OTCs, you're shorting, you're long, and you really can't get any information out of that. It's so information think, overload. And then you're never gonna get out of that. So the best way to do it is to go into your numbers dissect what's working what's not and just stick to what's working cut out what's not working even if it's less fun or you trade less and you're not as addicted and it's not as much you know excitement do that for a month and just see what happens because i guarantee you, you'll see you know an increase in your profit curve and you'll at the very least stop losing money at the rate you're getting rid of i'm glad you brought that up because successful trading is not fun it's actually more fun to try everything and you're like, oh, I want action. I wake up, oh, I made 200, yeah, I'm the man. But that's not like real successful trading. That's not gonna grow your account tremendously because you're gonna have the positives, you're gonna have the small wins, you're gonna have the small losses, and you're gonna be like, oh, this is frustrating, this is a grind. Then you're like in it every day, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., you're like, oh, this is a job. And it's like, wait a minute, I got in this to get away from a job. And it's like frustrating, you're like, oh, this is trading, it's a grind. But that doesn't have to be your life if you simplify. Have you read that book? What is that book? Uh, the Japanese art of like decluttering and simplifying. Have you, have you read that? Like tidying up or something? Yeah, yeah. Tidying that's, up and simplifying. It's like I haven't read that. I have it though. But that's basically yeah. what you have to do. You have to tidy up, get away from just wanting action. I think this is a big problem with traders. Like you're like, okay, what's what's happening? You wake up, you have your cup of coffee. You're like I'm ready. I'm gonna trade. I'm not excited to trade. Like literally yesterday when I was buying Rafa. I was like, I can't, I can't ignore this chart because it's too perfect. And I think about how I will feel the next day if it breaks out and I'll feel guilty about missing it. So that's how I think, like, not because I want to trade, just because I know I'm going to feel guilty missing it. And that tells me that that's a good setup. And I think Rafa will turn out that way. What do you think about that? Well, I think about what you have to say or what I'm going to say or what do I think. Whoa, all of <laughs> the above. Simplify your okay. answer, man. So I think that I agree 100% with Dom because... One thing that I noticed is you really have to track each like strategy that you do. So you have to track your OTC panic dip buys, you have to track your breakouts, and you have to kind of build a database of your stats per pattern. And then you can kind of know how you trade them and your average percent gain, your average percent loss, and make sure you're trading them. Because if you're losing $600 on the pattern and your gains are only 400, obviously your risk rewards way off yeah. and you have to do something to fix it. And another thing that I think is super important is to really like, dissect your losses and just think about it and 
don't just brush them off and be like, oh, uh, I don't know what I did wrong. Like, you really have to, like, feel it and just yeah. think about it. And you have to learn from your losses because if you don't learn from your losses, you're going to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. And you just can't do that. Make the mistake once, learn from it. You've probably already heard it from all of us, what we tell you not to do. But if you don't learn from us, then you're just going to make the mistake yourself. And if you don't learn from it ever, you're never going to move on and get to the next step. And it's a tendency, like, for humans to, like, want to avoid pain, right? So you have, like, a loss. You're like, I don't want to think about it. But you have to kind of embrace the pain. You have to embrace the pain. Internalize it. Like, really dig into it. It's not a fun process. Like, it's not like, oh, let me me figure out my pain. Like, Mm -hmm. it's embarrassing. It's frustrating. But when you get to it, like, oh, I did this wrong. Let me not do that. Like, once you really break down your most painful stuff and you confront it, instead of just pushing it like under thing. This is why I don't understand like non-transparent traders. Like they yeah. don't show all their losses. It only hurts them. Exactly. Like they, okay, maybe for their ego, or their social media, like, yeah, I never lose. But like, you're never confronting what's reality. Like there's no traders who never lose, okay? Everyone loses. It's all about how well you minimize your losses and mistakes. Like I post my trades on Profitly every single day, the day after I make them. That's good. And when I was still a loser, I made a video lesson on my HEAR loss the day after. It's amazing, it's good. And like I'm fully transparent. I think that's helped me a lot is being fully transparent because if you're not, it's just gonna hurt you in the long run. Why do you think you can post it so quickly and yet it takes him so much longer? Because I don't have an ego. Like I wanna show oh, people. Oh damn! <laughs> Yo I, I stay humble. Damn, so you think he has you think he has you think he has an ego? He loves to be like, oh I'm the man over here. Oh <laughs> wow Yeah I've never damn, said that. Damn I didn't mean to create a fight <laughs> I've or never anything. Said that. Are you being serious or sarcastic? Just, I don't know. I'm just messing around. I got man. you. No, but you know you post every day. Why don't you post every day like him? Well, I kind of just didn't do it for a while. It was around the time of the big loss. And nothing bad has happened since. I just, now I've gotten lazy because I have to manually do the oh, trade zero ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you I kinda, I've useful? always had a rule that I post them when I break to new highs because I was doing that a lot. Don't be superstitious. It's, just post it. Right. Bad lesson, good lesson. Good guy, bad guy. But no, it's, I, I like what you guys are doing. Um, I want you to keep it up. I want you also to stay humble. Like, Hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars is fantastic, but it's just a start. Yeah, it's like, nothing in the long run. Now I is. have to grow my hundred thousand and two hundred thousand and yeah. eventually three hundred thousand. And, and you a take it one trade at a time. Don't one be like okay. At a time. You don't have to force anything. There's gonna be opportunity down the road. Save your mental capital so you don't lose all of it on dumb setups, so you're ready to go. <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. No, seriously, congratulations. Thank you for everything. Thank, Thank you, you for being dedicated. Thank you. Just stay humble and don't be like, oh, I have to turn 200000 into a million this year. Like, it's if there's good plays, you take them. If there's no good plays, you do nothing. You can go hiking with your girlfriend. Like, there's so much that you can do if you treat this like a marathon and not a sprint. And I know you've, you've had, frankly, a lot of success in one or two or three years. Like, that's a lot. But what can you do five years from now? Like, how do you put yourself in the best position like a decade from now, like on your 30th birthday? Where do you want to be? And then how do you get there? Like you keep studying, you keep taking small trades. Maybe you post the details more often. You keep up your discipline, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. keep it up. Um, you're Jackaroo in the trading chat room. Yep, Jack and what's your Robert. username? Tell Mike, everybody. Michael G. Scott. Michael G. Scott. And your name is Dom. Yeah. Why are you Michael G. Scott? Because I'm just repping the office, bringing awareness to the show. Repping the office. <laughs> Get in the trading challenge chat room. This is how basically like I chat with you guys like I've never like really sat down with you like this Like, you know, when I met you once I said at a conference two years ago that you had a good American name, right? But like In the challenge chat room. I love like the camaraderie that's growing Like do you notice this like the challenge chat room? I was like damn like this is getting like really good And I you know, I'm in a lot of chat rooms. I don't know most chat rooms. They don't have like that I love the challenge chat room like I'm in there every day like talking to people yeah learning, I see you. thank you for that are talking about good and i love the challenge beautiful um click the link below if you want to apply for my challenge but please be dedicated okay these guys have put in the time 12 15 17 hours every single day no days off it does get easier like you're two three years in like by your fifth or sixth year you're gonna be like okay i know this shit like mm-hmm. i've already seen it but right now stay dedicated keep studying everybody else get inspired Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire, mentor, and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.